Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of Stephen Inks. Today we are looking at a pen which looks very similar to a pen that costs about 20 times the price of this pen. Today we are looking at the Jinhao 80 and you may have seen this thing and wondered, is it worth it? And also you may have wondered, is it as good as or does it really look that similar to the Lamy 2000? And I do have a Lamy 2000, so we're gonna compare that a little bit. I'm gonna use it for drawing and I'm gonna tell you what I think. I can't wait to get into it, so let's not wait any longer. Here's the pen. I chose the uh, green color just to give it a little something different, something I didn't quite have. And um, before I look at the insides, uh, I want to bring out some comparing pens because I do have a few things I can compare it to. I have the Keiko Edge, which is also supposed to be a clone of the Lamy 2000. And I have a Lamy 2000. So these three pens are supposed to be really similar to each other at very different price points. The uh, Lamy 2000, I think over $200 now, uh, US dollars that is. The um, Keiko Edge is around 20 or so. And this, um, this uh, Jinhao is under, under 10, I believe, when I purchased it. Um, so, um, yeah, on the outside, there are a lot of similarities. I'll say this, the Edge and the uh, 2000 have a similar texture, that brushed Macrolon. This is clearly not Macrolon. This looks like just regular old plastic. It does have a brushed texture, but even, I'm assuming even uh, on camera, you can tell that these don't look like each other. These two look a little more alike, despite the fact that they, uh, let's see, let me get that focused. Uh, despite the fact that they, they, on the outside, they don't look exactly alike because of the uh, Keiko Edge's clip. Um, but these two in texture and in feel are more alike than this one, which from a design standpoint, I mean, it's fairly obvious. Um, what this pen is supposed to look like. All right, so you may have a few feelings about that one way or the other. Um, we might bring these guys up again, so I'll leave them in the, uh, in the corner here. Um, but uh, the pen of the day, it does have a springed clip, just like the Lamy 2000, that's cool. It feels pretty solid. It's got a little rim around the edge here, which again, Lamy 2000 has. Keiko Edge does not. We've got a rounded edge here. On the top, it's a glossy finish for these two, but it's the same sort of uh, matte plastic finish for this one. Gold dot on the end matches the hardware. Um, on the bottom side of, oops, excuse me, of the 2000, you do have a silver dot, which matches the hardware and nothing on the Keiko edge. Um, opening it up, this looks very much like almost a, uh, a Lamy type nib. Mm, looks nice, looks decent anyway. Um, actually the feed in the back here, uh, let's see if I can get that to zoom in a little bit better. The back of this feed really looks like a Lamy. Look at that. That's interesting. Not the Lamy 2000, but uh, the Lamy Safari, the Lamy All Star, Lamy LX, if you fancy. Um, so, okay, that's interesting. Um, and we are talking cartridge converter. Gold themes throughout. I like when the colors stay consistent. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen, and the Lamy 2000, of course, is a piston filling pen. Um, so those are there's some similarities here with this one. Feels all right. Um, I don't think this feed will come out, so I'm not going to try and force it. This is an extra fine. 
Um, it feels lighter than the others in these guys right here. Um, this doesn't have the band or the that silver ring like the uh, like the Jin Hao and the Keiko Edge, if I can remember correctly, does also not does not have that ring. One thing I also noticed that the Edge has and the Jin Hao does not is that satisfying click when you close the cap. That I love, and that is my favorite one of my favorite features of the Lamy Two Thousand is that click. Let's see if we can get it again. I don't know how well that translates uh, to camera audio, but see, I'll do it right up by the by the microphone. Let's see what we got here. There you go. Um, and uh, once more for good measure with the Keiko Edge. But the uh, the Lamy, it's just a regular old. Nothing special going on there. So. Um, I think it's time we uh, played with this pen and uh, filled it up with ink. Oh, a green ink, you say? I choose Colorverse Somnium for this uh, pen. I have a couple of other green inks, but to be honest, I don't really like any of them. I have um, Diamine Sherwood Green, which is too plain for me. And then um, I have Another color verse ink, which is called remind myself uh, Pluto and Beyond, which is in was in a recent video on this channel, and I had some feelings about that. Um, it was it's a little bit of a slow dryer, so I didn't enjoy that very much. Um, this is from the mini collection, so it's a very tiny bottle. Um, know how many times I can still fill from this, but uh, in order to fill properly, we're gonna use the converter by itself instead of uh, bothering with um, putting the pen right in because it's gonna not be big enough. So let's see if we can get focus here. All right. that. Okay, we got some green. And let's turn that green into some ink, inked drawings. We're gonna do some test lines with this guy. Okay, time to see what we got with this pen here. Um, first of all, it does very snugly post, which is nice if you like to post. Personally, I'm a posting fan. Um, I, I'll lose my cap otherwise. So let's see what kind of line we get with this thing. Oh, wow. Look at that. This is almost a Japanese extra fine, and I'm not even trying to get light lines. Now I'm doing it a little bit lighter, but before I was just putting medium pressure. So I need to show you up close. That's amazing. Wow, good job, Jin Hao. This is, I mean, it's not only is it smooth, it's also extra fine which is what we wanted it to be. Um, but I'm just surprised that a pen at this price point can pull off a line like that and have it still be pretty, pretty darn smooth. Um, pardon my language, but this is a pretty impressive pen at its price point. Um, it doesn't feel great. I'll I'll say that as far as I mean the nib is is pretty smooth again con I'm considering its price in that in that assessment but um you know it's not a it's not a pen that you buy and someone says oh this pen cost only $10 and you'd say oh I'm surprised by that. Nope, it feels like a $10 pen. 
but it writes, uh, it draws a little bit better than I expected it would be. And I'm able to like figure out some more, um, I have room to build up values slowly, which is something that makes some pretty nice art. And um, if you have more skill than me, you're probably even better at that, but I'm just, I'm just playing around here. Um, I'm, I feel like I could really uh, spend even a few hours on a project here and it would be time worth spent because of the, um, the lines that I'm getting here. Um, they, they're, they're nice. I'm a little bit blown away. This isn't a, a surprisingly pleasant experience. I really thought that I was going to hate this pen. Don't know why. I even bought it, to be honest, but now I'm glad I did because this pulls off some really great feats in the extra fine market on a budget. There are pens uh, that go this fine that are of an equivalent quality um, and a similar price point. So I'm thinking of things like a Platinum Preppy, which is a great pen to own. If you like extra fine lines, you should own one of those for sure. But um, if you need to change it up, you could do worse than this pen right here. It's, it's a nice experience. Um, and from, from all of the pens that I own, probably the ones that I feel right the best are ones that I would never take outside of my house because I don't wanna lose them. So one exception will be my pen BBS pens. I knock those around all the time, but I'm not taking my platinum 3776 out for a spin. I'm not gonna take my Sailor Pro Gear Solid out. I would be scared to lose those. Those are my some of my finer lining pens um, and I use them a lot or at least a decent amount, um, but I definitely uh, use them at my house. But this, I could take this to the park. I could take it on vacation. I, I'm not, I'm not scared of something happening with this one. So cool. And I, I'm actually, I, I think you probably have noticed, like, hey, get to the point, Stephen. But um, I'm taking a little extra time with this because I'm building up layers, and it's a little bit scribbly, but it feels good to build into that. So um, I don't know. You tell me, do you expect quality of line like that from a um, from a $10 pen? I'm a little bit blown away. All right, and from here, I'm going to give you some art advice. Um, and uh, this is just reflecting on what I've been thinking and going through lately. You don't owe your art to anyone. Unless, of course, you're a commissioned artist and someone paid you to create art for them. Uh, you create, it's fine, but you shouldn't feel the pressure of having to create when you just can't or you just don't feel like it. I think it's better to be healthy mentally, emotionally, and physically than to um, try to please others by creating work for them. I feel that pressure myself a lot, especially lately as my channel's been becoming more popular, which is really cool. Um, the desire to just push, 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 push out content. Uh, I still publish videos every other week for that reason, that um, that's a, a pace that I can handle. And um, just a reminder, it's a wonderful blessing and gift uh, to have more art out there in the world. And I hope to see some of yours out there. Um, but it's not required and um, you don't owe anyone anything. So with that being said, uh, this next bit of art is my gift to you with this pen. I hope you like it.
so the concept behind this drawing is actually um, kind of based on me overcoming some social anxieties in the last couple of weeks. I, and I've noticed that <clears throat> I'm worse in social situations. Maybe you have felt the same, um, uh, especially since the COVID pandemic. It just feels like you don't know what's right and what's when you should get together with people. And again, this could be just me talking out loud, but um, I felt like I've just become so awkward lately. And um, I had the opportunity because I had some free time and thought I would just see if any of my old friends still wanted to hang out with me, even though I'm not good at keeping up with them and I don't know what's going on in their lives. Um, a lot of my friends these days have kids. I don't have any for myself so it always kind of makes me feel like I, I'm, I don't want to bother people uh, with my um, ideas for hangouts but I, I called a couple of my friends last week and said hey do you want to come over we can play board games and drink beer um, and they all immediately said yes and they were over at my house a couple of days later and um, were actually super excited that I had called them up because they also had not done much, had not gotten out. Um, I think COVID kind of did that to us, made us a little isolated and a little bit unsure of how to ask for social interactions. And I realized that I've been bad at that, but in choosing to jump into it, um, I got this great experience and my friends actually felt super um, happy that I'd ask them to do something. So just a thought out there if you're feeling nervous and anxious about interactions with people and you just don't know how to start, try talking to someone and seeing if they want to hang out. You might be surprised they might be feeling just as lonely as you. So that's kind of the concept for this drawing. People feeling so apart when really we might all just be in the same boat. Um, the Jinhao 80 performed fantastic for for me uh, while I was drawing this, um, I kind of like a boring, predictable line when it comes to drawing. I didn't have as much fun using it for writing because of that boring, predictable line, but I find that that's just kind of what I like uh, when it comes to my art supplies. So I um, hope you enjoyed that. So final thoughts. Um, this is a really interesting question. What do I think of this pen? Because it is obviously a, a relatively inexpensive pen. It's a $10 pen um, as of the, this recording. And uh, of course, a $10 pen is not as good as a $200 pen, but it has a lot of things going for it. It's really smooth. It draws really well. It gives you an actual extra fine line. And for a Chinese pen, that's actually, I think, pretty rare. I suppose it's getting more common but um, they tend to, to follow after sort of Western uh, nib sizes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a surprisingly good writer for its price. Um, I would say if I were to choose um, a pen of the three uh, that I looked at in this today's video, we had the um, Jinhao 80, we had the Lamy 2000, we had the, um, the Keiko Edge, if I really wanted a pen that was more similar to the Lamy 2000, I would choose the Keiko Edge. Same material, similar um, cap design, everything but the clip is pretty much dead on the Lamy 2000. However, if I wanted the best writing instrument besides the Lamy 2000, we all know the Lamy 2000 is a pretty great pen um, and priced like it knows what it is, uh, but, between the two, I think the Jinhao 80 is a more reliable and better pen. Um, it just has really great lines. It uh, is lightweight. It caps and uh, posts nice and easy. It also um, just, uh, just has a really great flow. And I've had some flow inconsistencies with my Keiko Edge. So um, this would be my choice actually, and I'm surprised to say it. I thought I wasn't gonna really like this pen, but I do. Um, and so with that being said, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it valuable. 
Um, and if you did, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing and all the other things you do that helps get my videos out there. Uh, please take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.